<coughs> Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was one of the first people to look carefully at the heart, to understand what it did and how it did it. His drawings of the heart and its valves are considered to be masterpieces of scientific art, and he describes in great detail in these notes the way the blood flows through the veins, vessels, and chambers, and how it activates the valves. It would seem that da Vinci had worked out everything about the heart. However, there is an enormous irony in the fact that, although da Vinci had worked out that the heart was a pump, he would never understand circulation. Circulation would be a discovery made about 100 years after da Vinci's time. Most people, even today in the 21st century, don't know how the heart works, and much less have actually seen it working. When I searched on the web for video demonstrations of a working heart, it returned with thousands of videos of student models, heart dissections, and open heart surgery videos, which weren't too, weren't too pleasant, as you can imagine. But none of these videos were what I was actually looking for. All I wanted to see was someone that had got hold of a heart and made it pump. Maybe this was asking for too much, because it seemed that wherever I looked for it on the internet, I could not find a single video of this. So I thought, for this talk, I'd get hold of a heart and make it pump. Well, this turned out to be a lot easier said than done. But with the help of Dr. Huey, <coughs> who I'm most grateful for, I managed to get it to work. We all take it for granted that the chest compressions in CPR, which are meant to physically compress the heart, actually work. Whilst Dr. Huey was looking at our pig's heart, he discovered that it wasn't actually the compressions that the heart relied upon. He showed me this. Well, he didn't actually tell me. He gave me a heart and made me figure it out by myself, which was very tedious, but ended up getting the job done. I found this demonstration so fascinating that I wanted to show you it for two reasons. Reason one, because like I said, it's fascinating. And reason two, well, it taught me so much more than I already knew about the heart. And hopefully, it'll teach you guys something new as well. So, yeah, here it is. The heart, the heart wasn't working with the, with the atria in. Here we have the atria. We're, we're shown here by the green straws. The atria are essentially like floppy bags that sit on top of the thick walled ventricles. And as they were no use to us in this demonstration, we carefully cut them away. Well, I say carefully, but I've never been too good with a knife. With the atria removed, and my fingers still on my hands, we could clearly see the ventricles, which are those two big holes there. Hang on, let me leave them. What we're also looking at here are the valves. We might not be able to see them. Well, you can see a bit of them there. But we can't see them fully, because they hang down like curtains. They almost appear to be attached to the walls of the ventricles, but they're not. To find out which of the two valves were attached to which of the two big arteries, those things there, we ran water, sorry, not valves, uh, ventricles. We ran water in through a tap into one of the ventricles, the right ventricle to be precise. And then something quite interesting happened. As the water filled up inside the ventricle, the valve closed around the stream of water, as you can see here. It closed to seal in all the water inside the ventricle. And if we gave the heart a quick squeeze, water spurts out of one of the arteries. And there we go, a working heart. My task may have been accomplished here, but I didn't want to end it there, because something had fascinated me along the way, and that was the valves. Here we can see the valve for one of the arteries, which opens to let the water out and closes to stop the water getting back in, but in our cases, it would be blood. As we can see by this demonstration, the key to the valve's mechanics turns out to be flow of liquid into the ventricles. However, traditionally we would visualize the valves to be like hinged flaps that respond to pressure changes, like in CPR, and open and close to let the blood in and out. However, by taking the simple step of removing the atria, we can now tell 
that the valves are more like loose fabrics that close due to the liquid pushing them up. The valves are kept attached to the heart by these heart strings, which stop the valves from flying open. It's a bit like having parachute cords and like the strings that attach the parachute to yourself. It'd be pointless without them. The, the parachute would just go flying off and letting the blood out, for this instance. The valve closes to make a watertight seal stronger than any solid mechanical valve could ever be, which is just as well, because this pig's heart is almost identical to ours. Pig's hearts are so similar to human hearts, in fact, that, say for example, I have something wrong with my heart, a surgeon would remove the valve from a pig's heart and transplant it into my own. So technically, pigs are heroes. <laughs> in this demonstration, we can clearly see how our heart works much better than we used to be able to anyway. We can see how the heart pumps. The heart pumps, like it does in this demonstration, about 70 times a minute for about 100 years, if you're lucky. Your heart is pumping now. And for the first time, for most of you hopefully, you know exactly what it's doing. Thank you for listening. <laughs>